got a lot of questions. We weren't supposed to focus on questions this week, and we're not. We're actually doing some mixes. We Weird. did some live events on some horrible. Yeah. Those are terrible mixes. Like pervious, but not. You they know, say it's not pervious, but it's like. Pervious. Listen, when, when you're doing an ultra high performance concrete, you need some paste in you there. You need some flipping paste. Like, you know, I used to have somebody that worked for me that went the optimization route, like too flipping yeah. far. You would get this mix in your mixer, in your truck, that was bony and nasty, yeah. and it would come down the chute. It was deceiving. No, it wasn't. It had enough pace to give you some workability, but it was still a shite mix. Right. So we're not talking about that today. No. But we are talking about something that relates to that nasty mix that we just... Put some pace back in there, would you? Please? How many more mils of water do we have to throw in there? Oh, what? 62. 62 on the first one. I already knew one. the answer. 100 and, uh, 112 on the second one. Okay. Q&A Wednesday! And we got a question from Snickwad. Ding! Thank you for your question. Hello, speaking of absorbent materials, thank you, or absorbent concrete, do you see 100% recycled aggregate plus manufactured sand crusher dust being used more? And is there any major drawbacks other than more variability in the materials? Is this mix design using these materials much more difficult? Can I dive into this one? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Be careful though. So yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. From the from the RCA perspective. See, I don't know if they were talking about RCA. They said recycled that was, aggregate. That was what, they didn't say recycled concrete aggregate. So what if it was just recycled aggregate from landscaping? What? But I'm just saying it could okay. be. So let's assume. It's recycled concrete aggregate. Okay. So if that is the case. That is the case. Then it's more difficult in the sense that you have got to do your QAQC for your aggregate. Um, generally, when you get aggregate, Mm -hmm. from an aggregate supplier it's already like all of the specification testing has been done and when you're using recycled concrete aggregate you kind of have to do it assuming you're the one who takes correct the concrete and turns it into cca and then right. rca because oftentimes that's what happens the contractor or whoever is doing the concrete Thanks. is the one that's doing it and right. so they and they're not aggregate suppliers, so they don't recognize that there's all of these tests and all of this processing that happens with regular naturally mined aggregate. And so they try to the just boring. crush it up. Yeah. yeah, try to crush it up and throw it back in there. And if you do that, then there's there can be a major problem. Major. Um, washing needs to occur, testing. I mean, there it's... Anything you would do for normal <laughs> aggregate... Has to be done, but the contractor ends up doing it, and so then... They think it's going to be cheaper and easier, but and they cut out all of these steps, which makes it cheaper, but then you can create really crappy concrete because you don't know what you're putting back in there. In the form of high uh, fines if you're not right. washing it. Correct. And an unknown on the absorption. Uh, well, and also if it's if it's um, been susceptible to ASR, to freestyle. I mean, if you're working with damaged concrete um, and you haven't done the test to recognize that, then you're putting just bad material back into your mix, which can lead to other issues outside of just the absorption and you know the fines and that sort of stuff. So to answer the question, because the question is looking at these high absorbent materials, do you foresee problems with those mix designs? And I think if, you, if you're going down the road that Whitney's suggesting, which most contractors do, or folks who are using RCA, you're gonna run into problems, but if and you do the work, well, I mean... But, but that being said, hold on. If if you were using virgin or natural aggregate and you did the same thing, you, would you didn't test, you didn't get the absorptions, you didn't wash, guess what? You'd run into the same problems. You'd run into the same problems. So let's assume for a second that who we're talking to, Snickwad, to me is we know that it's a high absorption. Sure. So what you could do is you actually set up parameters in this quality management system that Whitney's talking about, stipulating that, hey, if my absorption is greater than this amount, I can't use it. Now, what we have found with high absorptions is that you can actually use it as an opportunity. Right. So if you're not willing to evolve in the way that you're mixing, like I just want to throw this into my regular standard 0.8% absorption rock, 1.0% absorption sand, mix designs and use it like I normally would, you're gonna have problems. If you don't want to do the quality management, you're gonna have problems, absolutely. 
But if you go all the way with your evolution, if you're going to evolve that much, mm -hmm. innovate that much, and go after RFCA manufactured sand, hey, listen, these are not our words, but you're going to have to go to some type of manufactured materi material. Mm -hmm. Throughout the world, we're running out of quality materials for concrete. What are the sand mafias right. in Dubai and Mumbai where people on riverbeds or, or live on shorelines are waking up in the morning and all their alluvial sand from their shoreline is gone or their riverbed is gone because the sand from the desert is not the type of sand that we can use in concrete to make right. quality concrete. So eventually we're going to have to go through that process of using manufactured materials and as long as you use those high absorptions as an opportunity like internally cured concrete, uh, pre-soaking it with silica additives to right. uh, enhance the interfacial zone, reduce shrinkage, right. increase strength, enhance finishing properties. I mean, yeah, totally this can be a great mix if you're willing to put in the work. If you're not, hey, right. Oh, then you're going to have major problems. Just the biggest thing is recognize what you're using, know what you're using, you know, and be educated about it. And then you can make adjustments as necessary. For our company, Whitney is the expert on RCA and high absorption materials being put into concrete. She's li literally written the book. It's almost done. I have to get you some photos. Yes. So we're going to publish that book in like a day or so. But Whitney has literally written the book on now. <laughs> recycled concrete aggregate. And if you like and subscribe, we'll put you into a drawing Look at you! See, not complicated. I really still don't understand That's, it. Stop to that. receive the book. There you go. So two lucky folks will get a copy of this book, and it really is a beautiful book with beautiful photos in it. Um, and it goes into the basic definition as well as the more technical side of RCA. And this is the author. You get a signed copy of it. Um, but hopefully we answered your question today. I mean, I know we dove deep into it, sure. but see the opportunity in the obstacle that you're talking about, and you're going to make concrete. And I don't care what type of concrete, standard, high performance, low strength, cement stabilized soil, grout, more, whatever it is you're making, you can use that concept that you were talking about. So thanks again for your question. Like, subscribe, ding that, I don't know why I'm doing thumbs up here. <laughs> like, subscribe, ding I don't that, know what to do with my hands. <laughs> Go concrete! Beat asphalt!